Right, pull up a chair. Here we are. Here we are. How did you end up here? How did I end up here? Right, um, many, many years ago, um, played in bands, um, and then I sort of got into DJing by chance, really, because me and my ex-wife went to a friend's wedding. Uh, DJ never turned up. She started panicking. Um, I said, "Look, I've got some, I've got some, some bits and bobs in me garage. I'll nip back, see what we can put together." Um, and did that, and they enjoyed it, you know. Um, so it sort of went from there as a hobby, um, whereas I started buying little bits and bobs uh, to to where we are now, really, with you know, fifty, sixty thousand pounds worth of kit in in, in my garage, um, all state of the art sound and lighting equipment. Um, I met Rick. Must be about three or four years ago. I ended up DJing his daughter's 18th birthday party in Ellesmere Port. Um, I, I didn't know what Rick did. I didn't know him from Adam. Um, I just knew he was a client. Uh, wanted a, wanted a party for his daughter, and, and he, he sort of when I spoke to him, he was asking me all these sort of questions that you don't normally ask. You know, what sort of sound you have, what sort of lighting do you have, and all this. And I was explaining to him that we used, you know, the very best. At the time, it was EV, and we had all these other different lights, and he was quite impressed with that. I thought, never thought any more of it. Anyway, we got down to um, the venue, uh, and then it's, that's when he told me what he did. He did, you know, he sort of transformed venues for people. You know, if he wanted, a, like, a Jamaican wedding, he'd sort that out. If he wanted a pirate's wedding, he'd sort that out. And he'd done this room that it was in. I mean, it was in, if you remember rightly, it was in a pub called The Bull, Nails me poor, right, rough yeah. old. Um, but he transferred, I mean, when you saw the place, I was gobsmacked, you know, the way he'd done it with the uplighting and, and, and all the ostrich feathers, and, and it looked a million dollars, you know, and I was, I, I was impressed by that. And we've got on like House on Fire ever since. Um, you know, I've introduced him to people like Chris Lyons and um, other DJs and things like this, and put work his way. Yeah. And to be fair to Rick, you know, we come to me uh, last year, he said, Look, you know, we're doing a thing called Rock the Park. It's, it's the first one, it's going to be tribute bands. And I never thought in a month of Sundays it was going to be anything like this. I just envisaged some little stage in the field and he wanted me to sit in the hut on the side and DJ. Um, but when I got there, I was, again, I was blown away by the size of the staging, um, the quality of the bands. Um, but we have to remember, because these are really good musicians, they might be yeah. playing tribute music, but... Oh, yeah, I, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not knocking what they do. I'm, I'm, I'm just, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I've never sort of been a, a, a yeah, yeah. fan of the... Uh, of the tribute yeah. act, if you like, um, and you I've never been and, and, and not not because I don't rate them. Yeah. Um, I've never seen them. I've never sort of <laughs> attempted to go and see them. Mm-hmm. And, no, I tell a lie. I did. I went. I went to see um, an AC tribute band, AC DC tribute band. I don't think it was it live wire. Yeah, it was live wire, and uh, the the venue was a comedy club in Chester, but it's a different name now. It's um, and I saw them there, and I was blown away with them. And I thought. Mm-hmm. Hell, you know, and then I had the opportunity to do Rock the Park 2017, where they were headlining. Yep. Um, big show. Yep. Absolutely brilliant. Um, you know, me and Sam got on like house on fire. Stu, again. Um, went and did some stuff with Rick up in Langothlin. Um Might have to spell that one. Langothlin, yeah. Uh, <laughs> begins with an L, that's all I can tell you. Uh, and... I got asked back to come. Well, last year after we finished doing doing the doing, doing the, the the comparing or the MCing and the DJing last year, Sam comes to me. Said, "Absolutely brilliant, Joe. We we come back next year." I said, "Yeah, I'll be no problem." Uh, and here we are again, uh, bigger, badder, better, louder. You know. So was Doctor Rock created just for this sort of It character? was, yeah, yeah, okay, was, yeah, just for this. This this. I mean, we didn't do Doctor Rock last year. Basically, I just turned up in a pair of jeans, a t-shirt. Play rock music and, and, and brought the bands there's, on. There's very much a steampunk look to Doctor Rock. Is that deliberate? No, not really. I mean, I, I have I have this vision of what the rock gender should look like, if you okay. if you like, because back in back in the day, it was all leather tight leather jeans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was, you know, pointy shoes, uh, t-shirts with bands' names on things like. So I don't really want to go down that, that that sort of route. I mean, I'll, you know. What do I want to look like? And, and, and I went online, uh, eBay, if you like, uh, and everything that seemed to come up when you put in rock gender was steampunk. Yeah. Now I had this vision. I, I, I do like the sort of that hat type thing, and I thought with a pair of steampunk goggles on it, feathered out the side, yeah. um, 
I had the coat. I've had the coat for many, many years. Uh, I don't know why I bought it. I got it for a birthday present, and, and I bought it from uh, Lee Louise in Chester. And it was like sort of. It's quite a gothic coat, if you not not so much steampunk, but more gothic. Um, and then we had the sort of the punk type sort of um, the free shirt, yeah, shirt, yeah, frilly yeah, shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I sort of probably based it on what the what the guys at the cult looked like back yeah. in the day. Okay. Um, and like walking around the park yesterday, I had people coming up to me and saying, oh, "Just love that coat, love love the look." You know what I mean? So it seems to work. I mean, it was you know, I've not sort of this is the first gig I've ever done as Doctor Rock. It's just something we created just to come here and do, just to give it a little bit of an edge. Um, and like yesterday, as I say, you know, we did this thing where you know we played Eve of the War, uh, came onto Little Devil, the Cuz, but. In fairness, there wasn't that many people here, so you didn't really get the effect that you was looking for. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, if you did, did it later on at night when there was a few hundred there or maybe fifteen hundred there, then you would have got the effect. But it is what it is. I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, we just tried it, and it's just, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. I think you know, if we come back next year, then we'll do it again, or we'll do something different again. You know, I've seen people go and do rock discos. Is that the right word? Uh, when they come onto explosions and he's gone walking around the back of the crowd just to make a kind of an entrance, and yeah. I didn't see your entrance, if I'm honest. No, I, I mean, it's, 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 shame, just, I mean, uh, it's not, you know, it's, it's trial and error. It is trial and error, and, and and you're right there, Paul. But I mean, it's it's the same with the music. I mean, uh, you know, the bands that we've got here, the the, the, the more you sort of classic rock bands, aren't they? Than than, yeah. than you super modern. You yeah, know, like, yeah, I mean, yeah. all right, Royal Blood, yeah, you know, yeah, they're, they're quite current. Yeah. Um, but you know your Def Leppards, your Iron Maidens, you know your AC, they're all back in the day. We're bands, still we're they? still living in the eighties, <coughs> yeah, aren't we? But know? they're still good yeah. bands. But, I mean, oh, yeah, even yeah. even kids that weren't born yeah, are yeah. listening to them and they love yeah, them. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's you know. So when we sort of do the mix of the music, if you like, that's that's what we're transcribing. So that's what that's what we're looking at. Is is you know we're playing. And I noticed yesterday, you know, you put the, the likes of Journey, Boston, Ario Speedwagon, the Cult, bit of AC, DC, bit of, bit of this, bit of that, and they get up there and you can see them singing and you can turn the volume down, you can hear them feeding back to you so when you're doing that you know you're getting the response and you know you're doing something right you know that that's my take and i love i love rock music that's that's what i do you know what i mean but you know can also go and do grandma's 80th and i can also go and do you know your daughter's wedding and i can sort of mix and match all that so you know i, I always say to people you know when how can you do a 70s disco if you've not lived the era? You can't just go down W. H. Smith and buy a, the greatest hits of the 70s because the 70s was a decade, it was 10 years. A lot, a lot of music that never charted, a lot of music that sort of entered the charts very low. Real good songs, you know what I mean? People look, well, they just go on 70s, it was the Osmonds, it was Donna Summer, you know, it was the Bee Gees, if you like, you know. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, yeah. so basically, you know, if you dig a bit deeper, I look into it and I always when I'm doing stuff like that I'll have a look and I'll have a chat with the clients and I'll say you know what is it you want me to do for you you know what you said 70s do you want you know your popular 70s or do you want me to do that? and when you start talking to them you know some, some of these people are quite intelligent when it comes to music so you know they'll, they they will you know can you play something by the three degrees off this album or can you play something by the Detroit Emeralds off that album so you go and find it you go, and they're made up because you do that a lot of DJs won't do that they won't take the time to sit down and work a plan out you know yeah. which I think you have to do it's a business plan at the end of the day if you don't do it right they're not going to come back no, to you no of course you don't I'll tell you a secret I was born in 1968 so <coughs> I spent most of the 70s listening to my mum and dad's music yeah. uh, and I was brought up with Jim Reeves uh, Boney M and my dad was one of these people who bought a record on the Monday and he would continually play it on a daily basis until he bought another one. And if you've ever woken up on a March morning to when a child is born by Johnny Mathis, yeah. you will never play that song again. Well, but that was kind of where that was where the nineteen seventies music was in our house. And it's just so much more that they could have listened to. See and see I, my dad was Polish, so he never really had an interest in music. You know, not yeah. even yeah. Polish music back in the day. I mean I wouldn't know Polish music if jumped up yeah, 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 yes. yeah. uh, my mum otherwise she liked she liked like say Jim Reeves. Yeah. You know, Johnny Mathis, Engelbert, Upperdick, Tom Jones, all the usual stuff. So I guess me sort of being in me in me in my younger years, you know, I introduced my dad to A C D C introduced him because I used to like all the glam rock, you know, right. the, the, the likes of T Rex, I mean Slade, I've seen them about twenty times, me and me mates, you know, I just loved what they did. Yeah, with Noddy Holden and stuff like yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, Nazareth bands like that, you know, Hawkwind, um, so I liked all that, and then it sort of progressed onwards, and I've never really sort of lost that that gender of music. I love that gender of music, um, and it's great to come here 
and play what I love listening to. So I'm enjoying it as well. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, I'll do your wedding and, and I'll enjoy playing that, you know, and dance music. I, I always think, you know, if you want to dance to something, it doesn't matter what gender of music it is, it's got to have a beat. It's got to, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? You can't just sit there and go, oh, Jesus Christ, you know, first five minutes of all this weird synth and then the next thing is a, is a cracking hook comes in. Then, it, you know, you think, no, you, know, you want something that's going to flow all the way through. Yes. So, yeah. you know, when you're doing this sort of thing, you know, you can't sort of go from playing sort of Caroline status quo, which is quite, you know, upbeat, mm-hmm. and then drop in sort of, um, I don't know, some slow heart song. You know, it doesn't flow. Right. You know, so you've got to sort of, you know, build it, build it, build it. Build. And you yeah. see them then, you know, like I say, you put Journey on, Don't Stop Believing, they love it, they sing it, Freebird, Linden Skinner, another classic. Yeah. Um, and then you might you might just delve off and do something like Focus, Hocus Pocus, which is quite catchy. A lot of people won't know it, but if you're from the 70s, I recognise yeah, that, you know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. You know, we always used to go to all the um, the big, uh, not the dice, so it's called Download now, it used to be yeah, yeah. Um, Monster Rock. Monster Rock, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, you know, went to the very first one with that, with Rainbow yeah, 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 and yeah, bands yeah. like that, Mountain, and yeah. you know, we saw Ozzy Osbourne there, yeah. ACDC, bands like that, yeah. Touch and Riot, you know, yeah. except another German rock band that had just come out at the time, fantastic bands. Don't hear of them now, like, but I mean, yeah, yeah. I liked them. Did you go in 85? What year was that? Uh, I don't know what it, year it was. It was, it, uh, it was ZZ Top, Merillion, Magnum, Metallica, yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. The one, I, t- I remember going to one and they, they put the Manic Street Preachers on and they died on their ass. And they, basically it was because they, 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 you know people didn't get what they were about and I thought they were a fantastic band of Manics. Yes. But they stuck them on this massive stage with the likes of Bon Jovi, Bon Jovi were on. Um, and Brian Adams and a few others like you know what I mean. So they weren't deemed sort of heavy metal if you like you know what I mean but the, 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 <coughs> the festivals have changed when you and I were first talking about when you mentioned the original uh, Monster Rock there there's one stage one yeah. stage and now it, we've got several stages yeah. and these festivals and whatnot. well you so. have to look at Glastonbury the way that's evolved over the last you, 30, 40 years you, you, you can I mean? walk around Glastonbury and spend all day looking around the stores rather than go to the yeah. music can't yeah. you yeah. Yeah. Uh, secondary the music now isn't yes. it you know, and they yes. get that commercial now with the likes of Radio 1 getting into them and things like that yeah. um, so it's took a little bit of the edge away, if you like, because basically, like what you've got here now, it's a family music festival. It's not a rock festival. You call it Rock the Park. It's yeah. not a rock festival no, because you, you look at what's on. Yeah. You know, you've got Kasabian, you've got ACDC tributes, you've got Katy Perry tributes. So there's a little bit for everybody, yeah. which is great. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in for that. Yeah. And I wouldn't sort of sort of sort of have you know that's the rock stage, that's the pop stage. I mean, put them on the same stage. No, not everybody's into heavy metal. No. You know, so, you know, the kids love it, you know, and it's, it's a bit of a spectacle. Um, and I think the way Sam's and Cyclone and, and Stuart have done it, I think, yeah, you know. It's, it's been interesting, really, because I was talking to Sam yesterday, and it's like, where do you define Royal Blood? I can't remember. And I'm thinking, well, he must have found it somewhere. And he, he, he said, it's people like Mark Twitter that put these bands up. And and we're going back to what we talked about here, Stereo, earlier, with a yeah. very new band, and there's very little out there. So... There's a lot of new bands out there that Sam yet has to discover. Yeah. Um, and it's a shame because he's so young, he didn't live the 1980s when no. you know when all these bands were there. But if you'd ever seen Def Leppard in the heyday, I mean, we saw... I mean, the very first time I saw Def Leppard was at the Empire Theatre in Liverpool supporting ACDC, believe it or not, and it was the drummer's 16th birthday when he had really? two hours. Oh, OK, OK. Um, and I was that enthralled with him. I was banging and I come out and my legs were bruised when we just tapping because I just thought they were fantastic um, for a young band they were only young kids I mean they're yeah, all yeah, yeah. they're all 16, 18 you know they'd just come out of Sheffield yeah. um, and to support ACDC you know Bon Scott I mean oh, phenomenal mm-hmm. you know what I mean and, yeah. and after that we just followed them me and my mates you know yeah. and, and we went and seen them every possible time we could yeah. and obviously you know they've, they've had the tragedies over the years you know with the drummer losing his arm and one of them dying of drug abuse or alcoholic poisoning yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah. Um, but they've come back I mean they're only Liverpool I think at Christmas I'll go and see them then you know yeah. um, and it'd be interesting to see how they've aged I mean they have seen a documentary um, and I was quite shocked really to see how how they have aged you know what I mean they all but, they look well don't get me wrong but they sort of you know but we, we it's, when we come around and think about it when we were looking at Def Leppard and the Maiden stuff it was the 1980s they are now 60 and 70 oh, yeah, and, whatnot, yeah. and we are starting to lose them. Which is, which is why it's so good, coming back to the tribute bands idea, that yeah. we have these tribute bands now that are going to keep that view. Because once once they've gone, I mean, Fish, we were talking yesterday, 
for Marillion plans to retire in two years. Yeah. All you'll have left then is a CD yeah. or a video. Oh yeah. yeah this, this keeps the music alive. Oh, it does, of course. And it does, it's, yeah. it's, you know, and that, that, cla that classic style of 1980 rock, there aren't any new bands, or at least I can't find any, that have that same magic. Yeah, I, th I think the ne the, the nearest for me that come that, that come out, and I think it might I'm, correct me if I'm right. I think it might be the late eighties, might be the, the early nineties. Was a band called Kingdom Come, and they were oh, like Kingdom. sort of um, yeah, I remember Kingdom. They, they were like sort of uh, yeah. I always thought they were like the new Led Zeppelin for me, mm. you know. But they had these two albums, and then they just disappeared. And another band, another band was uh, Tesla. Remember them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, and I think it was phenomenal. I think that they had one album from, from what I can remember. Here's a question for you then. Let's use take that as a good example. <coughs> Originally there were five, yep. so Robbie leaves, and we reform with four. Jason's a little bit, and he goes, and down to three. At what point do you start becoming a take that tribute band when you've got very few members left? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it, I'll put this to you then. Go I mean, you go, you go to Spain on holiday, Benidorm, yep. uh, the Drifters, with know such and such original member yeah what are they are they the drifters or are they a, a tribute uh, that's tribute kind of, drifters yeah yeah i mean we've got people you know uh, um wishbone ash yeah there's two versions of wishbone ash at the moment um but yeah so that it's him from wishbone ash well he's a tribute band isn't it that's yeah that answers your question if you've got one person in it that's just a, that's just a tribute band Lindisfarne, I've got no idea what you said, what you call Lindisfarne, yeah. because there's so many Lindisfarne now. Yeah. But I mean, you, you think you, you, when you're paying your money, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're thinking you're going to see the Drifters. Yeah. I mean, and they're going to sound they're like the Drifters, drifters. Yeah, yeah. and possibly they're going to look like the Drifters, yeah. they're going to sing the songs the Drifters did. Um, if you're happy with that, I don't see a problem with no. it. You know what I mean? No, no, no. But don't go and pay your money and then start sitting there shouting, yeah. you're not the Drifters, you're a load of crap. We, we've had... Uh, there, there was a Gallus Cooper guys the other day. Um, they had gigs cancelled um, because people thought they were going to be the real Alice Cooper. We had uh, the, the carpet crawlers uh, at, the, at the O2 Academy. And Brian Cummings does an excellent job as a Genesis and he advertised it as Invisible Touch Tour by the carpet crawlers. Genesis and Hubbard. And they, people took their money back, their tickets back, because they thought they were getting Genesis. Really, for a tenner at the O2 Academy, and the gig was cancelled because the people had bought their tickets back. Yeah. And I thought, you, you know, are people that silly? Or are people just not listening and reading? Or do they expect more for their money and they expect, you know. I think, you know, another aspect as well is that, you know, you try getting tickets for an ACDC tour, it's nigh on impossible. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. when you put something like this on and you can bring your kids to see. For me, I yeah, think that yeah, it's good, yeah. that it's good if yeah. not better than the real yeah. thing. And and if your kid don't want to sit through it and doesn't like it, you're yeah. not going to pay 60 quid or 80 no, quid. No, go no, no, no. Thing. So yeah. it's a good, it's it a good thing as well. Like, so, you know, value for money, you can't knock you, it. You can't knock it, though. No, no. And, and there are a lot of good <laughs> festivals out there. Yeah. Maybe the variety of bands in these festivals need to change, because you do end up seeing quite a few of the same. The guys behind us now were at Tribe Fest yesterday. Yeah. Um, and if you were there inside the company day, you're seeing the same band again. Yeah. But... There's so so much forward planning and all this is difficult to know, isn't it? Yeah, no, no, you're quite right. You're quite right. So, yeah, so that's where we're basically up to, really. I mean, how long do I carry on for? I'm 60 years of age now. Um, the answer to that is as long as I enjoy it. Yeah. You know, when I, when I stop enjoying it, I'll stop doing it. I, I I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I'm, I feel like I'm 18 years old again. Yeah. Well, the only thing I would say to you is, if somebody said to me tomorrow, "This is what you're going to be doing in a year's time. This is how much work there is involved in it," I might have said. You know what? Oh, nah. Yeah, I might not have got it. But I, I've had a blast this weekend. Absolute fun. And people have been so good. Brent itself. You know, we, we, everybody knows me by name, and it's just been absolutely brilliant. And it's great to turn around and get into a, 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 an industry yeah, where yeah, everybody. That's what it is, basically, it, isn't it? It, it, my tribute band is an industry, isn't it? Yeah. And it's just where people actually know who you are. I wish I'd done it years ago, yeah. if I'm honest. I mean, what you see is, I mean, people look at the music business and they just see the bands and everything. They don't see the catering, they don't see the driving, they don't no. see, you know, the, the electrical side yeah, of it yeah. and, and, and the roadies. And it's a, you know, it's a big thing. It yeah. is a big thing. You know, you take something out on tour, yeah. you know, there's a lot to, I mean, you just look what Rick has to do. Yeah. You know, and the guy's stressed. <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, 
And then you've got the likes of the promoter, Stu, you know, I mean, they could lose a house if this goes wrong, you know what I mean? Yes. So, yep. you know, that's, it's quite scary, really, it, isn't it? it? And, yeah. and it's good that we've got people that just prepared to do that. Yep. Me, personally, and at my age, no one wouldn't, you know what I mean? But, you know, it's, it's good that people do do that. You know, you could win big, you could, you could lose big, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, do you think this has been successful? Off the record? I think it's but I, I think it's done really, really well. I think it has. I, yeah, I, I th- to be honest with you, I, I'm not sure whether Friday had more people than the Saturday and the Sunday because you had a bigger audience down I there. Think, I think I think I saw the studio yesterday, and when the idea was muted about putting a dance night on, he said, "You know, dance night. You know, I don't know anything about dance nights at all." <laughs> So it got sorted, you know, Chris Lyons came in, Pete Samba, um, DJ Cooter, Andy Whitley, um, Rebecca Rudd, Karen Paddy and all them. Yeah. And he said to me yesterday, he said, you know what, he said, I'm swaying to do it even bigger next year. The dance side of it. Really? Yeah. Okay. You know, he, he said, said it was he, certainly he, good. He said because basically, he said the bands cost a lot of money. Yeah. yeah he said I can get just Jules for a thousand quid. He said he turns up, gets on the decks and fucks off. I mean, so, yeah. and you, you get these guys, you know, big name DJs. I mean, we're not talking Tiesto or Calvin and Alice here, like right. we're talking, you know, Radio One DJs yeah, yeah, that yeah. will work, you know, £1,000, £1,500 a night. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'll fill that field. Yeah. Um, and it was impressive. It was impressive. I mean, we, we lost Paul, I don't, I don't know where he went all night. Well, he was up stage yeah. with you, and he was here then everywhere. And he was having a whale of a time out there. Oh, yeah, it was good. And he's so, still buzzing now. Yeah, I, so, I, I just think, you know, possibly they'll they'll look at doing, maybe, if they do three nights next year, it might be two nights of dance, one night of rock. Or, you know, you can't really integrate the two, can you? It's going to be one or the other when they do that. Like. I think when you go that far, or you go for a four-day. Yeah. I mean, you could do it on a bank holiday weekend. Well, bank holiday weekend. Yeah, so you got the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, you see, you know, it's all about costings and yes, you know, and and, and, and cancel and you do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Things like this. I mean, you, you know, from what Stu was saying, that you know, you know, you're not sure whether this is the right venue for next year um, because of the complaints. You know, this guy at the back here and you know, oh, the family no. down the down the lane there's not happy and. I mean, the access is not great, really, is it? The, the only issue I really <coughs> thought of was when we when we talked about it before. Uh, Sam said there was an internet mask, and I can't find one. And I think we live in a modern age where there needs to be kind of internet. People want to be buzzing, yeah. sending back. But 4G, well, whatever they yeah. call it, yeah, fine. I mean, my phone's fine. I mean, it's, yeah, you know, yeah, it's working I'm, for me. I'm a 4G. Yeah, can you know, and, and the nice people over at that bar yeah. have given us their internet as well, and they've got a satellite dish. So, <laughs> morning. But yeah, so um, yeah, it's been it's been, it's been good. I know yeah. if he gets it next week, next year, let's see where we all come back. Yeah, that'll be brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope we'll come back next year. Yeah. I think I will. Like, um, you know, health prevailing, and you know, yeah, we'll be fine. It's been good, Joe. It's been a blast. Oh, it's been awesome. nice meeting you, Paul. Thanks, mate. Okay, awesome. thank Take you. Care.